Okay, hi everybody again. It's the um, movie wrap up for oh, sorry, the movie wrap up for July. I don't really hope I can get this into two videos. I hate to do three things I guess. Like, the only reason I probably didn't watch as many is because my DVD player literally just I don't know what happened. Just stop working. Even my VCR too. I'm gonna have to get another one. Um, did watch Bring It On, Fight to the Finish. I watched another Bring It On. Yeah, I did. I think it was the one that was before this one. Um, this was made in 2009. Christina Mil. I'm about ready to put a clip right here. This keeps like push doing this. Okay, sorry if I. Christina Million stars as sassy cheer captain Lena Cruz, whose world is turned upside down when her family moves from the urban streets of East Los Angeles to the sunny beach town of Malibu at her new school. Lena clashes with Avery, the ultra-competitive -compet all-star cheer captain, while also falling for Avery's super-cute brother Evan. Lena's always been able to rise to a challenge. But can she create a new all-star squad that beat Avery at the Spirit Championships and still keep her romance with Evan? Hot music, fierce competitive competition, and high-flying fun continue in this all-new movie. Uh, special features, deleted scenes, practice round, backstage pass, on set with Christina Million, and more. It's all special. This is big enough for probably a bigger one. My hair is like really thick and everything. There now it's staying on the face. Okay, um, what was I grabbing? <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, the Hunger Games Catching Fire. Oh, by the way, it says um, every re revolution begins with this. Every revolution begins with a spark. Sorry, I just want to make sure I've seen that right. This was made in 2013. And I don't know if it'll tell me special features. Um, Academy Award winner Jennifer Lawrence returns as Captain Everdeen in this thrilling second adventure from the Hunger Games saga. Against all odds, Katniss and fellow tribute PETA have returned home after surviving the Hunger Games. Winning means they must leave loved ones behind and embark on a victory tour through the districts. Along the way, Katniss senses a rebellion, simmering one that she and PETA may have sparked. At the time, at the end of the tour, President Snow announces a deadly 75th Hunger Games that could change Pan Am forever. Uh, special features. Commentary, deleted scenes, and divergent sneak peek. Okay. Then I did get to watch The Hunger, the Hunger Games, Mocking J Part 1, Fire Burns Brighter in the Darkness. Um, this was made in 2014. Katniss Everdeen, Girl on Fire, has survived. She awakens from the cruel and haunting Court of Quail deep inside the bunker catacombs of District 13. Separated from some of her closest allies and fearing for their safety in the capital, Katniss finally agrees to be the Mockingjay, the symbolic leader of the rebellion. Still uncertain as to whom she can trust, Katniss must help Thirteen rise from the shadows of all the while knowing that President Snow was, has focused his hatred into a personal vendetta against her and her loved ones. Loved ending this. Then I did watch My Girl. I do have. Please don't skip. Sometimes if I move too fast, it'll start jerking and everything. This was May 1991. I do have a book to this. I have the first and the second, which I think if you watch my book videos, that um, you've seen that I've read it. I haven't read the second one though. Uh, a coming of age. Oh, this was made 1991. 
coming of age comedy starring Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Macaulay Culkin, and newcomer Anna Klumski. My Girl is an irresistible story of first love and loss. Klumski, Klumski I always had trouble saying her name, makes an extraordinary act, acting debut as Beta Saltberg. Veda Sultanfus, a precious 11-year-old tomboy obsessed with death. Dan Aykroyd is her widowed father in the father, the town mortician, and Jamie Lee Curtis is the sexy cosmetician he employs. Macaulay Culkin in another endearing performance is Thomas Jay, the boy who idolizes Veda. Their summer adventures, from first kiss to last farewell, introduces Veda to the world of adolescence. Perfect film for the parents to share with their children. My Girl is a mo motion picture to cherish. I don't think this thing has any special features, but if I'm not mistaken, it has like trailers to movies. I'm not like, 100% sure. And you know, I did watch Casper. That's probably said Prom Night. That's the next one. Okay. This was made in 1995. A lot of 90s movies. Of course, understandable. I was born in the 90s. 1990 to be specific. Um, from director Brad Spielberg and Steven Spielberg, Spielberg's Ambulance Entertainment comes a live action funhouse ride filled with laughter, excitement, and ghostly ghostly surprises. Ghost therapist Dr. Dr. James Harvey and his daughter Kat arrive at a drifty old Whipstaff Manor and its three owner Kerrigan Crittenden. I don't know if that's how you say her last name, I can't remember. Has hired Dr. Harvey to exercise the house's apparitions, a friendly but lonely young ghost named Casper, who's just looking for a friend, and his outrageous uncle, Stretch, Stinky, and Fatso. If he plan if the plan works, she and Dibs, her partner in slime, get their hands on the manor's fabled treasure. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Sorry. Meanwhile, Casper has found a kindred spirit in Cat, but the ghostly trio will not tolerate fleshies in their house. With hilarious antics and dazzling special effects for many of the creators of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Jurassic Park, Casper is a mile-a-minute adventure comedy for the whole family. This has some um, special features. Fun, interactive game, revealing Casper um, behind the scenes, and more. Casper Haunted House of Halloween Fun includes spooky game, creepy recipes, costume hints, safety tips, and more. Deleted scenes, commentary, talent bios, three bonus episodes of the animated series. Then I watched Hell Night. Some will be crowned, others will lose their heads. I don't think this is going to tell me. This is made in the 80s. I think the 80s. Possibly like 79, 80s. I'm not. Doesn't tell me. That's my problem. By the way, this is. This was. My sister's cover. I had. I'll show you the cover that I had. The cover I had looked exactly like my disc. Like that. I just didn't happen to like it. And I said, Crystal, look, I like your cover better than mine. Can I have it? She said, sure, yeah. So she would just switch covers. It didn't bother her because they were both directly the same, just different covers. I even wanted her, I wanted the whole movie of hers, like switch movies, but she wouldn't do it because I liked her mini music better. Um, yeah, I think it's from the 80s. Four Hamilton High seniors have been hiding the truth of what happened. To 10 year old Robert, Robin, Robert, yeah, Robert, Robin Hammond for six long years. But someone saw what they did and is preparing for revenge, a prom night killing spree. Hooded, masked, and wielding an axe, he'll stalk his prey in the dark, empty halls, striking when his victims are alone. And just as the spotlight falls upon the newly crowned king and queen, the killer, killer will show everyone what his favorite game is to play is. 
I love this movie. The only thing I didn't get is that, did she know, um, the guy she was dating and her friends even killed her sister? Like, accidentally killed her sister. Did she know? She was acting like she did know. And, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, is that why also the, them two girls stopped hanging out with Wendy and started hanging out with her, like, guilt, in a way? I guess it's semi guilt and semi like Wendy becoming a witch. I did watch Precious. I do have the book to this a, a push. I do have the book to this and I will get around to reading it, just not right now. Um I'm trying to figure out when this was made. Two thousand nine. Precious Jones, an inner city high school girl, is illiterate, overweight, and pregnant again. Naive and abused, Precious responds to a glimmer of hope when a, a door is opened by an alternative school teacher. She is faced with the choice to follow opportunity and test her own boundaries. Prepare for a shock, revelation, and celebration. Commentary from Push to Precious, uh, a Precious Assembly. Oprah and Tyler, A Project of Passion, A Conversation with Authors Sapphire and Director Lee Daniels, Deleted Scenes, Audition, and Reflections on Precious. Then I watched The Little Colonel, I think. If really knows, I do like Shirley Temple. I really wish I could get some of her older ones though, like her older and her teenager, but a lot of people didn't like her older, they liked her younger. Even today, people tend to like her younger roles better than her older ones. If I'm not mistaken, in Bluebird, she may look the same age as she does like that. She's way older, she's actually 13, they even had it like tape her, you know, tape her booty down, just to so she wouldn't show like she wasn't aging. She couldn't do that forever though, she had to grow up. But this was made in 1935. This, this Shirley Temple classic has never looked better. A patented coloring and remastering process makes her picture perfect charm and more vivid than ever. Oh yeah, I think if I'm mistaken, this has um, black and white ink, yeah, black and white in color. If you get this one, this is specific DVD, uh, then you can actually watch it in black and white and in color. In the post-Civil War South, Elizabeth Lloyd marries a Yankee. In response, her stern Confederate father vows never to speak to her again. That is, until a few years later, when Elizabeth's adorable daughter charms the grumpy old man. Shirley and Hattie McDaniel share some light moments in a cookie conspiracy scene. Shirley is thrilled when the legendary Bill Bojangles Robinson uh, teaches her a tap dance number on the stairs. If you're wondering who I'm talking about, there. As good as I can get it. And I don't think this thing has any special features that I'm aware of, because it is the same thing. Then I watched Friday the 13th, Deluxe, uh, Deluxe Edition, it's uncut. This was made in 1980. It ripped into a chilling new uncut deluxe edition of Friday the 13th with the addition of unrated footage and insightful special features plunged deeper into the film that spawned 11 sequels at the time and the genres in Stop Old Bye Bye Guy, Jason Voorhees, a new owner and several young counselors gather to reopen Camp Crystal Lake when, where a young boy drowned in several vicious murders occurred years earlier. They've ignored the locals warnings that the place has a death curse and one by one they found out they find out how unlucky Friday the 13th can be as they are stalked by violent, violent, violent killer. Special features, commentary, fresh cuts, new tales from Friday the 13th, the man behind the legacy, Sean S. Cunningham, a Friday the 13th reunion, Lost Tales of Camp Blood Part 1, and theatrical trailer. I really wish they would have made a lot more than Lost Tales from Pan Blood. I actually highly enjoyed like them. They were like really cheesy and all that, but I actually really liked them. A little like 
don't know how many minute movie, maybe 20, 30 minute movie, like a little short. Then I did watch Valentine's Day. All those stars, all those laughs, and all star cast sparkles in this hilarious and heartwarming romantic comedy from the director of Pretty Woman and The Princess Diaries. Stories crisscross, collide, and boomerang in this look at a day in the life of love. There's there's a proposal, flowers that didn't get sent, a big fat secret that's finally told, the I'll show up and surprise him that ended up surprising her, fights, kisses, wrong turns, right moves, and so much more. Whether new love or through with love, you'll fall in love with the 19 star funny side of Celebration Romance. This was made in 2010, at least that's what it says. Uh, special features exclusive Sex in the City 2 sneak peek trailer. And star pack to start an additional sneak. I'm assuming like the least and stuff. This I actually always thought was funny. Then I did watch. This is one of my favorite four movies. That's the reason I was trying to get to it sooner. I did watch Chainsaw Sally. Uh, Killing is in her blood. I love, 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 love this movie. I really wish they would make a part two. I know they made it in, um, let me see, The Sally Show. I think they made two seasons of that. I'm going to get that. I, I want to see that so bad. Uh, this was made in 2007. Long after the sun has set in Portersville, the steel of the night is shattered by blast of a chainsaw and screams of flesh-ripping punishment. At the age of ten, Sally Di Damon Diamond witnesses witnessed the brutal murder of her parents. Alone in the world, she raised her little brother as best she could. Haunted by nightmarish memories of the killings and severing an ever-growing taste for revenge, She's now a quiet young woman, timid or harmless, most locals would say, but they don't know a thing about Sally, who is obsessed with gruesome images of violence, torture, and retribution. Sally might live the life of a small-town librarian by day, yet she is something completely different at night. And the night is coming, and the hunt will begin again, with Chainsaw Sally acting as judge, jury, and bloody executioner of those who are evil in her eyes. Uh, special features, commentary, making of documentary, Gunnar Hansen interview, yeah Gunnar Hansen plays in this, H.G. Lewis interview, silence music video, did I watch that? I'm not sure, Sally artwork gallery. Yeah Gunnar Hansen, if nobody's ever seen this, Gunnar Hansen plays like Sally's father, so when it says that they die, yeah, he dies. No offense, I know everybody will be like, oh. But it's like, you could see him every once in a while, though. Um, like, her flashback memories. So. It's not so bad. Then I did watch Underworld. I'm not sure I didn't say anything. Um, this was made in 2004. In the underworld, vampires are a secret clan of modern aristocratic sophisticates whose mortal enemies are the Lycans, a shrewd gang of street thugs who prowl the, prowl the city's underbelly. No one knows the origin of their bitter blood feud, but the balance of power between them turns even bloodier when a beautiful young vampire warrior and a newly turned Lycan with a mysterious past fall in love. Kate Beckinsale and Scott Speedman star in this modern-day action-packed tale of ruthless intrigue and forbidden passion, all set against the dazzling backdrop, dazzling backdrop of a timeless gothic metropolis. A commentary, cre creature effects featurette, music video, Finch, Worms of the Earth, Making of Underworld, Sights and Sounds featurette, uh, Stunts featurette, Storyboard, Comparison, Bonus Trailers, and TV Spots. 
something. I did watch, the only reason I found out about this one, I watched it on TV, and I'm like, man, that's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find that hard, see if they came out with it on DVD. Luckily, they did. It's A Stranger's Heart. I think I watched this on Lifetime, if I'm not mistaken. Or Hallmark. Lifetime or Hallmark, one of them two. Uh, sometimes love comes twice in a lifetime. Where did I see him before? Great, now I forgot again. I used to know, like, he played in some other movie. I think I've got it, so. This was made in 2006. Lose yourself in the drama, romance, and inspiration of a stranger's heart. Just when things seem darker, darkest for a woman with a life-threatening illness, she finds hope and happiness in the last place she ever expected. Starring Samantha Mathis, Peter Dobson. Wait, now I remember. Peter Dobson played in The Frighteners. It all of a sudden occurred to me. The only reason I remember that is because I remembered I watched that movie, too. Peter Dobson and Mary Matlin Mouser. A stranger's heart proves that sometimes love does come twice in a lifetime. A truly unique, unexpected, and engaging love story. This has no special features. Okay, forgive me about this. The cover got messed up, so my sister like just printed me out one. Um, but Lake Dead. Uh, yeah, a lot of my covers got we were moving, and some of my covers got destroyed. The disc and everything else is in perfect shape. It's just the cover. Again, this doesn't come with special features, but this was made in 2008. Three beautiful sisters learn of a long-lost grandfather, but only make this discovery upon the news of his grisly death. Enticed to visit Grandpa's old home after hearing an inheritance, the sisters head to the back country with some friends. We quickly follow the group of friends through the gates of a redneck-infested hill. The psychotic family occupying the inherited property goes on a long-awaited and much-enjoyed killing spree. As the family's twisted motives unravel, the sisters discover terror worse than death. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite eight films that I've heard. This and the one movie I ain't got, which I am going to buy, is called The Hamilton. It's just one of the eight films that I heard. And I did watch others when I loved it. It was so funny. It's kind of like a spoof on Twilight. Um, Vampire Sucks. Extended Bite Me Edition. This one I loved. It's so funny. I bought it because I thought it was something else. Uh, but this was made in 2010. Oh wait, I remember. The only reason I bought this, yeah, I thought it was something else. But I was so like wanting the um, one of the Twilights was coming. I think around the time they made this, and I said, well, this looks like it's almost like Twilight. I'll grab it. Oh yeah, it's like Twilight. All right. <laughs> the, let me see. Um, yeah, I think there's special features. Um, sink, sink your teeth into the celebrity funny spoof, Vampire Sucks Extended Bite Me Edition, with more outrageous humor and bloody good fun. Becca, an angst-ridden teenager at a new high school, finds herself torn between two supernatural suitors, a moody vampire and an extremely hairy werewolf. Yeah, Edward and Jacob is the only ones that actually keep their name. From two of the Akami masterminds who wrote Scary Movie and co-starring Ken Jong, this laugh-out-loud comedy will leave you howling for more. It's basically exactly like Twilight, except funnier, like jokes and stuff from it. Includes both the theatrical version and the rated extended version of the film. Deleted scenes and gag film. Yeah, it's got funny stuff happening in it. I mean, that's Buffy, and there's that Chin dude, I can't remember his name. He plays Ario, but not really. I can't remember what his name is. Something, I can't remember what his name was in the movie. Then I did watch Bo Keeps from Backpack. Backpacks to Stroller. This was made in 1987. When high school students Molly Ringwald and Randall Bank 
cough, fall for each other, they wind up taking a crash course in adulthood in this contemporary romantic comedy. Darcy is a fleeging journalism student who can't wait to see her name in print. Stan is hoping for a scholarship, scholarship to Caltech on top of the world and in love. The future seem idyllic until one thing throws them off track. A baby, this unexpected change of events, doesn't sit too well with their moms and dads who just aren't ready to be grandparents. So Darcy and Dan split from their families, get married, and begin a life on their own with their new bundle of joy. It doesn't take long before the honeymoon is over, diapers are in, and late dates are out. But in the end, sharing kisses, be doing dishes, as Darcy and Stan and their families discover that the best love of all is for keeps. This is actually really good too. Um, I did watch Halloween 4. I'm just going to make sure of something. I watched that one too, but I guess I didn't yet. I don't know I did. I did. Give me a minute. It's kind of pain. Kind of pain fit. Okay. Yeah, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Uh, this was made, I'm hoping it'll tell me, 1987. It's hard to believe it was that long ago. Anyways, um, trying to figure out where to start. Ten years ago, he changed the face of Halloween. Tonight, he's back. A, dec a decade ago, he bur butchered 16 people trying to get to his sister. He was shot and incar incinerated, but still he the entity that Dr. Sam Loomis, the legendary Donald Pleasant, calls evil on two legs, would not die. Tonight, Michael Myers has come home to ki again to kill. This time, Michael returns to Hattonfield for Jamie Lloyd, the orphan daughter of Lori Strode and her babysitter, Rachel. Uh, yeah, babysitter slash adopted sister. Can Loomis stop Michael before the unholy slaughter reaches his innocent young niece? Uh, Michael Pataki, Sasha Jensen, and Kathleen Kimont co-star in this smash sequel that marked the long-awaited return to the original storyline and remains infamous for its startling twist ending and graphic violence. I'm trying to see uh, its commentary. Two different commentaries. Uh, Halloween 4 slash 5 discussion panel, the making of Halloween 4 final cut, the extra trailer. Then I did watch Idle Hands and Funny Pop. Let's see if I show it here. I feel like I actually showed this one before. The comedy that gives horror films the backhand. I remember I saw this really, really a long time ago. Let me see how long ago this was. It was probably around 1999. I think I actually saw it around then. And, um, 1999, 2000, something like that. But, um, I saw this so long ago, and it stuck with me, but I kept forgetting the title. Stupid, because it's only two words. But, I've got it now, so I'm happy. Um, The Devil Will Find Work for Idle Hands Do. But what happens when he chooses the laziest teen slacker in the world to do his dirty work? Anton Anton Tobaz is a channel surfing, junk food munching, couch potato burnout who can't control the murderous impulses of his recently possessed hand. With the help of his zombified buddies Mick and Penub, Anton's got to stop the rampaging devil appendage before it takes total control of his life and ruins any chances he has with class hottie Molly. Vivica A. Fox and Jack Noseworthy co-star in this weekly funny horror comedy. Comment yeah, commentary, deleted scene, uh, making a featurette, production notes, the actual trailers, and storyboard comparison talent files. Then I watched National Treasure. I do have part two. I, you know, I can't remember. You guys got to tell me. Um, did they make a part three yet? 
or are they going to? Oh, by the way, before I forget, I have 24 subscribers. I know that ain't a lot to oh, some people on here that have like thousands upon thousands of subscribers. 24 is a lot for me, especially since I just started posting videos like maybe a couple months ago. That's a lot to me. Especially when I only had one subscriber and it was my sister. So I'm happy with 24 right now. Hope to get more, but I know it'll take time. But do did they make part three yet? If not, when are they gonna make it? If anybody knows. This was made in 2005. Um, let me see. From Jerry Buckheimer, Bruckheimer, sorry, Bruckheimer, producer of Pirates of the Caribbean, and John Turltub, director of the Phenomenon, comes National Treasures. It's the thrilling edge of your seat adventure starring award winner, Academy Award winner, Nick, uh, Nicholas Cage as Benjamin Franklin Gates. Ever since he was a boy, Gates has been obsessed with finding the legendary Knights Templar treasure, the greatest fortune known to man. As Gates try to find, tries to find and decipher ancient riddles that will lead him to it, he's dogged by a ruth, ruthless enemy who wants the riches for himself. Now, in a race against time, Gates, Gates must steal one of the America's most sa sacred and guarded documents. The Declaration of Independence, or let it and a key clue to the mystery fall into dangerous hands. Hard pounding chase, close calls, and the FBI turn Gates' quest into a high stakes crime caper and the most exciting treasure hunt you've ever experienced. Alternate ending, deleted scenes, national treasure on location, the Knights Templar, treasure hunters revealed, Ridley decade, decode this, Rid Oh, not Ridley's. Riley's decode this. Opening scenes. It's like a game. It's a puzzle game. Opening scenes. Anim animatic with optional director's commentary. Then I watched... Just Friends. I knew this was going to be funny just because of... Anna Ferris being on it. I think it's really right. Anna Ferris. I hope so. Yeah, yours. This was made in. Please tell me. This isn't going to tell me. Cause normally it's right there or right there, and it's not nowhere. Great, I don't know when this was made. By the way, I am going to get another. I'm going to try anyway. It's going to get another Ryan Reynolds movie called The Proposal. I want that movie. I want that, and then I want. What's that called again? The Admission? But I'm gonna get them two movies soon. Cause I saw them, they were like really funny. But uh, let's see. In high school, Chris Brander was a shy, overweight teen with a crush on the beautiful Jamie Palomino. Unfortunately, Jamie thought of, it, of the good-natured Chris as just a friend. Fast forward ten years, Chris is a suave, fit, and successful music executive, visiting home and looking for a little payback. Love has other plans for him, though, as he attempts to once again woo Jamie, all the while trying to distract the ditzy pop diva client he has in tow and a rival suitor. Soon enough, Chris finds that romancing Jamie has got, not gotten any easier in this outrageous comedy of errors. Uh, blooper, deleted scenes, alternate endings, nine behind-the-scenes featurettes, Jamie Smiles mu music video, Feature link, commentary, filmic, filmmakers, and more. Then I watched. By the way, this will be the last one. X, X Men Two, X Men United. This was made in 2003. Following a shocking attack on the president, the X-Men must stand united with their deadliest enemy to combat a menace that threatens every mutant on the planet, and possibly all of mankind. Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, and Halle Berry lead an all-star cast in this dazzling, action-packed spectacle that is arguably the greatest superhero movie ever. 
um, full length, oh, commentary, two commentaries, Nightcrawler attack, interactive multi-angle scene study, uh, Wolverine Deathstrike fight rehearsal, the second uncanny issue of X-Men, making of documentary, uh, extraordinary X featurettes including the secret of origin of X-Men, a complete anthology, Nightcrawler Reborn, The Adventure Before X2, Introducing the Incredible Nightcrawler, Character Study and More, 11, deeded and ex 11, 11 deleted and extended scenes, 6 revealing still galleries and theatrical trailers. Well, I will be cutting this into two videos and I might be able to do just two videos. So, bye everybody.